Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and it's been a while. Even though COVID is still around, obviously, ugh, at least it is somewhat possible to travel again and if we can travel, we can take pictures. Obviously a lot has happened, maybe I'll tell you later, and you may also see, you know, I'm still working out the lighting in this particular recording spot yet. But who cares, because today at least the important part is the editing. So today we're going to use Aurora HDR, which is usually, as the name suggests, an HDR software to edit this particular night image that I took in Salzburg the other day and do what we do best, which is make the image pop. And if you're wondering why does he use an HDR software, I'll show you. Let's jump right in. Okay, so here I have my single image file. Nothing amazing, I simply placed my camera on the railing of a bridge and shot in the dark. I was lucky, it was cold, I just wanted to go home. Anyway, so that's the shot. Let's throw this one into Aurora HDR. Once done, I'm simply gonna say create HDR and wait a moment. Cool, and just as we are here now, you may already see why I prefer to throw these images into Aurora HDR, which is an HDR software which typically is not the greatest with night images, but here you go. If you just look at the before and the after and the before and the after, it's already pretty, pretty amazing. The reason is simple, the software simply tries to darken the bright areas and brighten up the dark areas a little bit, so it's kind of a pseudo HDR if you want. Could you do all of this manually in Photoshop or Lightroom or wherever? Sure, would it take a little bit longer? Probably, and also it's part of my workflow, so anyway, here we are. Now the controls are on the right hand side, so if you have never used Aurora HDR, make sure you check out a tutorial, preferably mine obviously, which is this video to get the hang of the basics. We're gonna pretend you know how to use it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to crop the image to our liking. So I'm going to hit the crop symbol on the top. And I'm going to start to rotate the image a little bit just to make it really straight. Even though that's difficult because the horizon is kind of hidden. But let's say this is straight. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio so I can freely crop and just go down to somewhere like a though, uh, this. <laughs> I'm also going to bring it in from the left a little bit to maybe something like this. As well as from the bottom to maybe something like a that. Once done, hit enter. Cool, I like this. Let's jump into the controls. First thing I want to do is, that is a night scene. And for me, night scenes should be at least somewhat blue or have like a bluish cold feel to it because it looks cold, that image, because it was cold. So I'm going to go for that and by simply changing the temperature of the image here. So I'm going to drag that slider towards the blue to something like that. If I compare the before and after, it's a little bit more blue. I've taken a little bit out of that heat and I'm happy with that. We can also change the tint to go a little bit towards the magenta or purple or whatever you want to call it. And that also looks goody. Increase the exposure a little bit to maybe something like that as well as the contrast to maybe something like that. I'm going to bring down the blacks a little bit just ever so slightly and increase the whites as well. Just to really make the, you know, the lights pop a little bit. Now I do think we can increase the overall saturation. So I'm going to do that. Not too much though because it's going to look weird. Don't worry about the blue in the sky just yet. And moving down the options, I'm also going to give it a little bit of HDR clarity. I like that function, it makes things crisp. And I'm especially looking at the water now and it kind of looks cool. So I'm happy with that. I'm also going to give it a little bit of HDR smart structure. And that gives it this typical HDR look, um, which has to be taken with a grain of salt. Don't do it too much. If you do it too little, you don't see it at all. Do it to your liking simply. So I'm just going to move that slider back and forth until I'm happy. And I think I can live with something like, like here, not too much. I'm always adding a little bit of denoise, but I usually do this at the end as well. I will not touch the image radiance because it kind of makes everything dark again and I don't want that. So what I will do is I'm just going to move down, down, down until I reach the HSL sort of section. Within that I can change the saturation and I'm looking for the blue. Because for me at least this guy is far too blue, so let's bring it down a little bit. Tone it down to maybe something like this. Next up, I'm going to jump all the way down to the vignette, and here I'm going to go probably for a quite large amount. Maybe like this. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to place the center on that building sort of arrangement there. Maybe a little bit more like here. Cool, and now we can play with the amount. I think I like this. I'm also going to feather it a little bit so it's not, you know, this super dark edge, but it works well for a night image. And very important, I'm going to increase the inner brightness to maybe something like this. Now the building's got a little bit white now because of this inner brightness, but we can easily fix that. 
by going all the way up to the color contrast under color. So I'm just going to increase this slightly and this brings back some of the color in the buildings. Cool, so that is the general work. So we have now, let's say, 80% done. If we look at the before and after, I believe it's worth it. Oh, yeah. Now, let's add some crispness, if that's a word, to the water by simply adding another layer. And I'm not only focusing on the water here. And probably we don't even have to do much. I'm going to straight away jump to HDR Enhance and increase that clarity a little bit. So that makes the, the sort of light lines pop a little bit here in the foreground, which is sweet. And we can also try the structure. Careful here not to make it too unrealistic, but of course do as you please. I'm going to increase that structure just a little bit, maybe something like that, not even more. We may also try to play a little bit with the saturation as well as the vibrance just for the foreground, just for the water. And I think in our case, vibrance, which focuses on sort of the, you know, unsaturated areas on the whole composition a little bit first before it saturates anything else might be our friend, our friend here. So I'm going to increase the vibrance a little bit and really make that foreground pop. Now looking at the foreground, the before, not that's the complete before and after. Nope, I mean the before of that layer and the after, we can see that the foreground is a little bit more poppy. Now we just have to brush that in. So I'm going to on that layer, hit the brush symbol, select the brush and simply paint that in where I want that effect. Cool. Once done, we hit done. Now, if we look at it before and the after, it's a subtle difference, but I like it way more. Now we are basically done. The last thing I want to do is I'll take care of the green here amongst these buildings because I think we can make that pop a little bit more. So what I'll do is I'm going to create one more layer, our last layer for the day, maybe, hopefully. And I'm simply going to use the smart tone because the smart tone does basically, it just lights up everything. Like, look at this. I mean, you know what I mean, right? So I'm just going to increase the smart tone a little bit to maybe something like that. Increase the contrast a little bit to something like uh, very little, maybe something like that, even a little bit more. And again, hit the brush. I'm going to use the brush and I'll just paint that in where I want to have these light spots. Cool. Be generous. There we go. So if we look at the before and after for this particular layer, let's hit done first. The before and the after, I like that there is a little bit of green visible now. It's, you know, it's just preference anyway. So last layer, I promise, I promise, uh, <laughs> if we go down all the way to, to the tonal curves, here I just want to add a touch, just a touch of red. So I'm going to go to my red curve right here. I'm just going to increase this curve a little bit. And you see how it sort of puts the whole scene into this very, very subtle reddish tone. And I really like this a lot. Uh, it sort of takes away a little bit of the cold. It still feels cold because it was, at least to me, but it looks a little bit warmer. Sweetness in motion. Let's close out these things and let's have a look at the before and the after. And the before and the after. Or if we use the slider. Yeah, I, I don't really think I need to say anything else because... Uh, <sighs> awesome. There we go, yet another quick and easy edit with Aurora HDR. I really hope that company never goes bankrupt because then I have a problem. Anyway, I do hope you liked this quick editing example. If you did the usual YouTube of blah blah, give it a like and the subs and the things. And I shall see you next time. Have a good one.